Uh, hi guys, welcome back to my channel Q Warrior and here we only discuss the interview questions that is asked in testing interviews and if you are new to this channel so it's very important to subscribe and also press the bell icon to get notification about this channel and today we are going to see another important topic and it's very important to watch this video till the end so let's begin. So today's topic is difference between alpha, beta and gamma testing. Okay, so now let's start with first alpha testing so it is an internal checking uh, that is done by the in-house development or the QA team okay and the main purpose of alpha testing is to discover uh, bugs that were not found before okay so why alpha testing is done to get the approval from the customer before proceeding to the deployment of the product into the production environment okay so uh, we directly cannot deploy the codes into the production environment unless and until the three different phases of testing that is the alpha testing beta and gamma testing is done properly okay and this alpha testing includes a different type of testing like smoke sanity integration system usability UI acceptance, regression and functional testing. So we will look all these different type of testing in details in next upcoming videos. Okay. And what actually happens in this alpha testing is that if any error is detected, then it is immediately addressed to the developers. Okay. So that they can fix that defect. Alpha testing is used to discover issues that were missed at the requirement gathering phase of the SDLC or STLC okay so alpha testing or you can say the alpha release is that version of software that has passed the alpha testing so once the software has passed the alpha testing phase then it is called as alpha release okay and most important thing that you have to note down is it is done at the developer side so now let me tell you the interview questions that arises is that what is the difference between alpha beta and gamma testing so most of the time you have to tell about the site or the location where this particular testing is done okay so alpha testing it is basically done at the developer side and beta testing it is generally done at the client side okay so now let's see about the beta testing so beta testing is also called as pre-release testing so in this phase also the software is not released or not deployed into the production environment okay so in the beta testing it is generally conducted by a limited number of end users okay before the official delivery of the product okay so what is the main purpose behind this beta testing is to verify the software compatibility with different software and hardware configuration type of network connection like 2g 3g and 4g networks okay and also to get the users feedback on the software usability and functionality okay before the development team hand over the product to the client okay so there are generally two type of beta testing the first type of beta testing is called as open beta which is available for a large number of end users okay so now let me give you an example so you may have seen that a company like microsoft they release beta version of any software into the market okay before they release the full version of that software in order to collect the reviews from the users that whether this uh, software fulfills the requirement and the demand of the clients or not okay so open beta is available for large group of end users and closed beta it is available only to a limited number of users okay that are selected especially for beta testing 
okay so it's not like that that once a product is developed and it is tested by the QA team there are client testers also means there are testers available at the client side which does these kind of testing called as closed beta or the beta testing okay so during the beta testing the end user can also detect and report bugs if they find it may happen that as you all know that exhaustive testing is not at all possible exhaustive testing means that testing all the different permutation and combination of scenarios so it may happen that QA team or the testing team may have missed some defect so during the beta testing before the product is released what can happen is that the end users can detect some defect and it can be fixed before deploying the code into the production environment okay so all the testing activities that are performed outside the organization or the development organization is called as beta testing okay so always beta testing is done at the organization apart from the one who has developed this product okay and it is generally used to identify the gaps between the stage of requirement gathering and their implementation okay and the most important thing to mention in any interview is that this testing is done at the client side okay now let's understand what is gamma testing okay so gamma testing is the final stage of the testing process that is conducted just before the software release okay so we generally perform this kind of testing in order to make sure that the product is ready for market release okay so why we are performing so many testing so for example if I am talking about an application that help you to book a bike ride okay so there are many application available in the market like Vogo, Drive Easy and Bounce. Okay. So now if I have developed a application for Bounce, that application is not tested thoroughly. And when a user is trying to book a, a ride, so he is facing some or encountering some issues. So what will happen is that if your user or your client is facing some difficulty while booking any ride then directly it is impacting your business because the user will be of the view that this app doesn't work as or it is not made or not tested thoroughly so what he or she can do is that they will directly install some other applications like Vogo or drive easy so what happens is that if your application is not thoroughly tested your customer base can shift from your business to some other businesses that's the reason the quality product should be released means the testing should be done in a very good manner okay so now gamma testing usually focus on, focuses on the security and functionality part okay so and it doesn't include any QA testers means those people who have already tested this application they are not included in this type of testing okay so during gamma testing software doesn't undergo any modification okay unless or until any bug is detected which is of high priority and severity so gamma testing may not require any code changes unless and until there is a high priority and high severity defect found okay and only a limited number of users can perform the gamma testing and as i have already mentioned that testers are not allowed to participate in the gamma testing okay <clears throat> now this testing includes the verification of certain 
requirement not the whole product okay so what we discuss is that security and some functionality so feedback that is received after the gamma testing from the client business and the stakeholder are considered as update for upcoming version of that software okay <clears throat> So it may happen that the client or the business may experience some thing that um, they might not have given some requirement for that. So once they experience that, yes, this is missing or this enhancement is required, this update is required. So all those kinds of feedback are considered as update for the upcoming releases. Okay. Also, this because most of the time in the real world scenario where the development cycle is very limited so what happens is that uh, till the very end like just before a days of software release also you may see that the testing is still going on so most of the time what happens is that this gamma testing is usually skipped okay because of the limited development cycle or limited time left in the sprint okay now let's see a summary of all the different type of testing alpha beta and gamma okay so alpha testing is done in order to validate software in all perspective and to ensure the readiness for beta testing okay in beta testing end user provides their feedback and it is also used to ensure the readiness for the gamma release okay now in gamma release what it happens is that they check the software readiness to specified requirements okay now when it is done when is the alpha testing done at the end of the development process beta testing is done only after the alpha testing phase is complete and gamma testing is done only after the beta testing is complete okay now who is responsible for performing the alpha testing so the development team or the QA team member or the customer is responsible for doing the alpha testing okay beta testing a group of real end users is responsible for beta testing and limited number of end users are responsible for gamma testing and what we get by doing this alpha beta and gamma testing is that bugs blockers missing features and other functionality okay now in beta testing we get idea to improve the usability compatibility and functionality so it may happen that for some version of Android or iOS this software is not working correctly or as expected so in this case they can get to know about the compatibility of the software as well okay now in gamma testing we get the idea for updates in the upcoming version of the software okay now once after the alpha testing is completed it happens is the beta testing and once beta testing is completed gamma testing is scheduled and after gamma testing finally the product is released into the production environment or application goes live okay so that's all in this video and we will see most interesting and important topics in the upcoming videos so please subscribe to my channel like the videos and also comment down on the video if you have any queries Thank you for watching.